Welcome to Burlington City Arts Family Art Saturday. My name is Jessie and today we are going to be thinking playfully about painting and the possibilities of materials in art making. This Family Art Saturday connects to Burlington City Art Center's exhibition, Meg Lipke's In the Making. We're going to start by looking at some of Meg Lipke's soft animated paintings, and then we're going to be creating our own animated stuffed painting. I'm really glad you're here today because we're going to have a lot of fun as we playfully paint and explore some art together. Artist Meg Lipke was raised in Burlington, Vermont. Her art combines abstract painting and textiles. She often works on fabrics that she paints, stuffs, and sews to create art that projects from the wall, like the one we see here, Lavender Aqua. Sometimes she even stuffs her painting with fluff from old puffy jackets. Look closely at Meg Lipke's slump. What do you see? Describe the shapes, colors, and patterns you find. What does this work remind you of? Because Meg Lipke's art is not flat, the puffy dimensional forms that turn and bend can seem to take on a life of their own. Imagine if this artwork was alive, what do you think it might do next? Meg Lipke's artwork has totally inspired me. It made me consider how I could use fabric and stuffing to create forms that felt lifelike and animated. I started experimenting and in the process, I discovered that I could make a painting by stuffing a sock. Check this out. I created this painting with a sock and things I found around the home and some bright paint. And I love the way it starts to stretch out and create this life-like Form. I've experimented with some different colors and sizes of socks and they're all really fun and become these little animations that are all their own personality. So I'm really excited to share this process with you today so that we can make our very own three-dimensional stuffed animated paintings. Let's gather our materials so we can start creating. The socks is a major material you're going to need. And any kind of socks will work. The best type of sock that works is the one that's around your home that doesn't have a match. Maybe you have one of those. If so, choose the lonely sock. But little tiny socks make adorable, fabulous, paintings, white socks work great, colorful socks, excellent choice, even socks with patterns and pictures on them will work. I created this piece here with a striped sock and it was super fun to work on. You're also going to want paint. I have been using a washable tempera paint, super easy to work with. So love that. I have several different colors I'm going to use today. I've got a jar of water and a paintbrush, a surface to work on that I can easily clean up. Putting down a piece of paper or a mat might be a great choice for you and your family. And I also gathered some items from my recycling that I could upcycle for this project. I'm just going to begin taking this sock and I'm going to stuff these materials into this sock and you'll find socks are pretty stretchy. They're going to, they're going to hold quite a bit of this stuff. Not all of it, but this gives me enough stuff to experiment with. I'm going to start with this lid. Put it inside my sock. 
I'm gonna push it down to the bottom. Okay. Alrighty. I can see I've transformed this from sock shape into this wonderful new art shape with a rounded top and oh, I'm feeling inspired. So I'm gonna keep exploring these materials and seeing how they shift the shape. You'll notice just that lid on its own shifted the shape so it was totally rounded. So what's gonna happen when I play with the rest of these things? So just start start exploring, stuffing your sock with um, any of the items. You might like some of them, some of them you might not like the shape of. Just play. All right. So I've totally filled my sock and I stopped once I got to the top. I don't want anything coming out too far. I could even stop a little earlier if I want. But I'm not gonna worry about this. I don't think anything's gonna, nothing's gonna fall out of my sock. I wanna make sure nothing's gonna fall out of your sock. But I don't need to glue this or anything. It'll be just fine like that. And I can start really checking out my form. If I want, I can twist my sock a little bit. So once you're happy with your stuffed shape, then gather your paint and brush and water, and we'll start um, adding some beautiful color to our pieces. All right. So as I approach this painting, um, I like to look for different shapes that I can see emerging from this new stretched form. Like I can see that I have this really cool rectangle shape. I might try to paint that. I'm gonna add some pink paint there. Um, some socks I notice really absorb a lot of paint. They might take a little more than others might be helpful. It's helpful for me to have a nice wet brush while working. I just keep applying my paint. Oh yeah. So already I can see where that shape was jutting out. I've really highlighted it by painting it that color. I like it. So now I'm just going to start exploring, seeing ways I can apply color and being a little bit playful with it and certainly having fun. There's no um, wrong color to choose or place to put it. It's all about being playful and experimenting and you deciding how you're going to make your piece of art come alive. As I'm painting, um, my work is going to be wet for a long time in these areas. A sock takes a longer time to dry than a piece of paper does. And I just kind of twist it and turn it as I'm working, knowing that if I touch an area that is painty, it is going to get a little messy, but it's going to be pretty fun too. So when I've reached my stopping point with my painting, I'm going to let it dry. It's going to take a couple hours to dry, but that's a really good time because I can come back to it and look at it with fresh eyes. And then I can start to decide how I should display this painting. So after your artwork is dry, then you can start to explore ways of displaying your artwork and thinking about do you want it to hang on the wall like lavender aqua or would you want yours to be leaning against the wall like slump and each one of these animated paintings that you create is going to um, 
called for its own way of curating. And as you spend time with this art, and that's what Meg Lipke finds, as you spend time with this art, you'll begin to understand the way it interacts with different spaces. So I noticed some of them, like I hung this one like Lavender Aqua was, and I just used a tack. It was really lightweight, but I felt that was a really good way to display that tiny little painting. And this one kind of just stands on its own. And the one that I painted on the striped sock, I liked the way it leaned against the wall. Its personality seemed to really come out that way. And I notice if I change the position of my painting, a whole new animation and story can start to reveal itself. If I've laid it flat, I mean, sometimes the character changes completely. It's really fun. I can display it depending on what colors that I want to work with, or if I want it laying down flat or really tall. So many possibilities in the way that you curate these. And if you're working with a family or with others, or if you've created a few pieces, it's interesting to see how they might start interacting together and telling a story, even if you only have one piece, the way it interacts with the space on its own. Like, how is this painting interacting with the corner and what kind of story does that tell? It's really fun to play with and start exploring the space and the way that your painting will interact with it. Thank you for joining me for this virtual Family Art Saturday. I'm looking forward to spending more time with my newest animated stuffed painting. I'm gonna look at it from all different angles and I might ask myself if my painting came alive, what kinds of stories would it have to tell? It's been fun thinking creatively with you today and playing and experimenting and exploring all the different ways that painting can take shape. I hope you and your family continue to explore and experiment in the arts. We have another upcoming Virtual Family Art Saturday in March, March 27th. So I hope that you could join me then and until then, I wish you the happiest of creating. Goodbye.